a lot of people are like, but it's so expensive to eat healthy. It's so expensive to be healthy, but then what's the payoff? Won't it be expensive when you get sick and you have all of these doctor's bills? Isn't it wise to invest now? You think it's expensive to be healthy? Talk to somebody that's gone through cancer and ask them how expensive it was and how hard it was. I can, I guarantee you it's not even close. It's not even a comparison. Someone that goes through chronic illness and loses time away from work and their family and the stress and the loss of income is nothing compared to living a healthy lifestyle. It's so much cheaper to do it up front and so much better for you just to do the preventative maintenance ahead of time so you don't get to be a sufferer. This is episode 130. I am so happy that you're here and thank you for joining my show, your coach, Helen Yuskovic. I am on a worldwide mission to help people get confident in putting themselves first because I used to put myself second my whole life. And because of that, I experienced every unhealthy relationship possible, an unhealthy relationship with myself, my health, my wealth, my intimate relationships, my family, my friends, and my career. I'm now living in an abundance that I used to just dream about. So I want to pave the way for you too. It's time, guys. It's time that you live in the life of your dreams as well. So let's take a step towards that right now. Here's subscribe to my podcast on your app now so that you always tune in to my new episodes. Hi guys, this is part two of our episode with Ryan from Test My Home and you're going to love this. If you haven't heard last week's episode, please jump on and listen to that first so that you can get an understanding of all the amazing things we spoke about last week. Here we go. Let's go. Let's talk about mold, Ryan. I, you know, my friend, she has this thing that she puts on her wall and every morning when she wakes up, it fills up with water. And she said, this is from my house. And she, cause she has kids in her home and it's a little apartment. So let's talk about mold and moisture in the house. Some people have it and they leave it thinking that it's not a big deal. Like we mentioned before, can you share some more information about where does this water come from? What is it that she's actually getting in that filter thing? And why should we worry about that? Yeah, a couple of things. So mold has to have water to grow. It's an organism that's living and alive. And it's actually very conscious, very smart, actually. And it's just like us. It needs a food source. Typically, a food source is going to be anything organic. So it can be paper. It can be wood. It can be leaves. It can be skin cells. It doesn't grow too well. It doesn't like rocks or glass mm-hmm. or plastic or metal. It will grow on the surface of some of those things. And what you're seeing, it's growing on the microfilm, the the dust and the particles that are on those surfaces. So if we have water, and typically it's above 60 to 70% humidity is when we see the risk for mold to to start to grow. And so what she's doing there, she has a dehumidifier and she's pulling moisture out of the air. She's taking the, the water away from the mold so that the mold does not have a chance to grow. So if you're in an environment that has humidity above 60%, you do want to run a humidifier. Uh, Your air conditioning unit will pull water out of the air by nature. Uh, Just make sure that drain line is draining properly to the outside. Uh, Mold is dangerous because it puts off uh, mycotoxins. And the mycotoxin is the poison that it uses to claim its territory. And it's not necessarily trying to hurt us as humans. It's trying to fight for its, its territory. Its, its species is immune to that mycotoxin, but all the other species will die off. So as, let's say, black mold, for example, starts to grow, it will start to release the mycotoxin, kind of to claim its territory, kind of like gangs would in the, in the big city. You know, saying, this is my territory. This is my hood. No one come up in here. We're going to shoot you up with our mycotoxins. <laughs> and so that, unfortunately, we get caught in the crossfires of that and we breathe that in. And that's when we get all kinds of neurological effects. We get the headaches, the brain fog, the dizzy. We get the skin irritations, get stomach issues. I mean, the, the list goes on and on because it's basically just a poison for the body. And it attacks the body and it uh, hits us at our weakest point. So whatever your weak link is in your body, that's typically where you're going to see your symptoms starting to show up first. Got it. You mentioned black mold, a few, black mold a few times now. Can you explain, is there different types of molds that we should be aware of? 
Yes, thousands and thousands of different types of mold, different species. Just like we have thousands of species of animals, some of them are very dangerous, like lions and tigers and bears. We don't want to mess around. Some of them are very harmless, like little kitty cats, you know. But the same thing with mold. We can have mold that's very, very dangerous that can that can kill us. And there's some mold that's not harmful at all. That can be beneficial. Penicillin is, is made from a mold. It can be antibacterial. There's a movie I watched recently called uh, What Happened to Brittany Murphy. She was an actor of 8 Mile. Um, yeah, she died. In, they think it was because of black mold. Once she, her and her husband both died living in their house. When they sold the house, her husband they did, too. The husband too. Yep. They, the person who bought the house, went into remodel, and it was one hundred percent riddled with black mold from top to bottom. And they both, they, I think, in the report, it said something about lung or you know um, pneumonia, but more than likely, it was the black mold that got them because they never left their house. And it's because we inhale it. And our body just doesn't know how to filter it out, right? So what's happening is it's creating some sort of disease in the body. And the more you're exposed to these sorts of things, the more your body's just saying, can you stop? I can't handle this anymore. Boom. Here's a condition. Yeah. Back in World War One, I, I believe, or two, they were experimenting with nerve gas that was developed from the mycotoxin off of black mold. So the the, the nerve gas that they use in warfare. Was, is derived from the mycotoxin from black mold. It's a literal poison. That's crazy. I love your brain, Ryan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the other side to mold, though. There's about 25% of the population that's actually allergic to mold, and they get a different set of symptoms. They get the, more of the skin rashes. They get the stuffy nose. They get the watery eyes, the sore throat, fatigue. And that's just from being around the mold parts in general. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the mycotoxins. So interesting. Ryan, it's time for your third curveball. Are you ready to All play? Right, let's do it. What's your favorite form? What is your favorite form of self-care? Uh, I have a lot of self-care stuff, but you know, I I like to I like to exercise. I like to get physical, you know, every day. If I don't do that in the morning, I get up early and I go do my workouts and I like to do the sauna. If I don't start the day that way, it kind of throws my whole day off. So that's real important to me. Infrared sauna or is that like a cold Both. sauna? Both. It's uh, the, the sauna we, that I go to has the red light and, and the heat sauna. So it's kind of a combination sauna. Wow. I have an infrared sauna downstairs here. I have a wellness studio here at home. Oh, yes. So... I love the infrared sauna. Let's go back to our conversation. Ryan, I want to talk about some ways that people have toxic chemicals in the home that they might not even be aware of. What are some of those things that just a normal average person might have at home that they don't know are toxic? The very biggest unknown one a lot of people aren't aware of is fragrances. Fragrances are the worst out there. Unless it's derived from a natural source like uh, essential oil, it's mm -hmm. derived from a chemical and usually a combination of chemicals. And they usually have phthalates uh, with them, which they put the phthalates in there to make them sticky so that they'll persist. So that when you spray on the cologne or their perfume that you can smell it all day long. The problem is they stick in our body also. They can mimic hormones. They can be hormone disruptors. And there's so many products that we use on a daily basis that have fragrances in them. So when you see fragrance on a bottle of personal care products, shampoos, conditioners, anything, just think to yourself, toxic chemical. The home should not have a smell. A clean home, a non-toxic home does not smell at all. There's no smell to it. So when you walk into a really clean environment, you shouldn't smell anything. If you smell something, then there's something off. It's either mm. biological, maybe there's a dead mouse, maybe there's mold, <laughs> maybe there's a gas leak, maybe there's chemicals, uh, off-gassing. There's something going on in the house. Clean does not have a smell. So that's an important takeaway from this. That's so interesting. Uh, on my road trip recently, my friend's friend came along and she would spray perfume and she would spray it right on her neck. <laughs> and I, when I saw it, I'm like, don't spray your thyroid. And she's like, huh? And then mm -hmm. I was like, why don't you just spray your clothes instead? Like I have essential oils as well that I use. Can you talk about 
<laughs> why am I obsessing over people spraying their necks? I mean, I haven't done that for a long time. There's been thyroid issues in my family for a long time. I luckily don't have any thyroid issues, but why shouldn't we why shouldn't we spray our necks with colognes and perfumes? Our skin is very, very porous and we can absorb a lot through our skin. A lot. And people don't think anything, oh, it's solid, it's protecting us. It's very, very porous. So now you're putting a direct chemical directly on your skin, directly next to an important organ in your body or gland. And it's not just the perfumes. It's I mean, when we wash our clothes and we put the downy, the the fabric softener in there and the smelly conditioners and washers and the the hair and all this stuff everything are you familiar with the website ewg environmental working group no oh that's going to be your best friend it's so good oh my gosh yeah you go onto that website and you can you can download an app from your phone and you can scan the barcodes of these products so you can go when you're in the grocery store you can scan the barcode and it'll rate it from a scale from zero to ten ten being the stuff's going to give you cancer no doubt one being you can rub it on your baby or drink this stuff so we decided, you know, when we first got into doing this, we're going to go through the house and everything that's a three and higher, we're going to just throw it away and we're going to keep everything that's left. I'll tell you what, we didn't really have anything left in our house. We had <laughs> three garbage bags full of stuff. We're like, what are we going to do? This is hundreds of not thousand dollars worth of stuff here, but it's all toxic. And we just, you know, we didn't want to throw it away. We took it down to the shelter to donate it. And, you know, yeah. but I felt bad even giving that to people. Because I know yeah. it's not good for you, but they would have used stuff anyway. So we went and replaced it all with natural stuff. Now we clean with vinegar and water and baking soda. We have all the natural. My wife, you love her. She's pretty granola crunchy. She's got all the hippie yes. stuff in our in our house. But she keeps I love me healthy her cool. already. I yeah. had granola for breakfast, wife. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's so Perfect. funny. But I think. You know, when I started getting more conscious of this was maybe about five years ago or so, and I just started small. I just started first with like the household cleaning products, mm. just started with those first. And then I was like, how do I let go of these beautiful perfumes? They smell so good. And mm -hmm. then slowly, you know, I started shifting and making my own essential oil perfumes. So for those of you listening, don't think that you have to like, <laughs> you know, do what Ryan did and just get rid of your whole house. <laughs> you can do it slowly because I think every step that you take, you become more aware and you become more mindful of the things that you're ingesting, spraying on yourself, using in the home. Uh, so I think that's a really important thing. Anything you'd like to add? Um, you know, I meant, I would mention if you are sick, if you are suffering. So we, we deal with three different types of clients. We have our sufferers, we have our warriors and we have our warriors. So our, our warriors, it's like me and you, you want to live as long as possible. We've got our wellness spas. We do our saunas, eating healthy. Uh, then you got your warriors and that's typically the mom with a couple kids uh, just want to be as, as conscious as possible make sure there's nothing in the home that's causing any kind of illness. Then you got your sufferers. And these are the, the category that I have the most heart for. These are the people that are suffering, that are not well, they're sick. And sometimes they've gone to four or five different doctors. And I know because I've been there, I was one of those people. I was a sufferer. Now I'm a warrior. But we want to turn all these sufferers into warriors. Mm -hmm. But if you're a sufferer, sometimes it does take just throwing this stuff away and really starting pure and natural and getting back to nature as much as possible. Use nature as the gold standard. Say, did this actually come from nature? How processed is this? Is this something that went through a factory? Is this something that has chemicals in it that I can't pronounce that I don't know what they are? If it is, maybe you shouldn't be using that right now. Wait till you're getting, wait till you get better, till you feel good. And then you can revisit some of this stuff if it's something you're truly attached to. But you probably, I get, I probably you won't, once you get past it and you get better, you won't want to go back to that stuff because there are a lot of natural, healthy alternatives. And a lot of times they're not any more expensive. We've replaced all of our, cleaning products with vinegar and water. And then we put lemon peels in. I can tell you that's very, very cheap, very yep. cheap. So a lot of the alternatives are not any more expensive. Yes, I agree. You know, that's the first thing that people think, even with food, you know, if you don't know what the word is on the back of your can or your packet or whatever you're eating, then you just know that you're eating some sort of a chemical if it's not natural. 
And a lot of people are like, but it's so expensive to eat healthy. It's so expensive to be healthy, but then what's the payoff? Won't it be expensive when you get sick and you have all of these doctor's bills? Isn't it wise to invest now? But as you said, I don't find it that much more expensive. I actually find it a lot cheaper. Like my perfumes, they used to be $100 to $200. Now with an essential oil, I've got a perfume Mm -hmm. that costs me like a few dollars. Yeah. And so you're saving, you're saving on money and you're saving on your health. And my friend that I was telling you about with the humidifier, she got, you know, an illness And so the first thing I said to her was, you know, maybe she had implants. I said, maybe you should take out your breast implants because I hear Mm -hmm. that they cause a lot of autoimmune issues. And have you thought about your house? Like, is there mold? And yeah, last time I went, she had the humidifier and she has gotten rid of her breast implants as well. So yeah, just you mentioned before that, you know, there's the sufferers and if you are suffering, <laughs> I would say do what you did and empty out the house of the toxicity just in case anything that you are ingesting is causing more harm, which it probably is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, you know, you touched on something too that I resonate with well. You, you know, it's, it's, you think it's expensive to be healthy. Talk to somebody that's gone through cancer and ask them how expensive it was and how hard it was. I can, I guarantee you, it's not even close. It's not even a comparison. Someone that goes through chronic illness and loses time away from work and their family and the stress and the loss of income is nothing compared to living a healthy lifestyle. It's so much cheaper to do it up front and so much better for you just to do the preventative maintenance ahead of time so you don't get to the, be a sufferer. Mm, totally. Ryan, it's time for your next curveball. <laughs> Are you ready to play? Okay, I'm ready. Ryan, when was your last, big or small, when was your last random act of kindness? Ooh, I mean, little, yes. I mean, little stuff. I always try to open the door for people. I always think that's, I mean, if two people were going into the store. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a, we were, I was taking my son out for pizza. He loves pizza. And I always like take him out little son, dad date. And there was this lady walking behind us. It was cold. And so I waited and I opened the door and let her come in first, but she, she almost didn't want it. She was surprised that I was being that nice. Like, what do you want for, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Chivalry but, is dead. Why is this person being nice to yes. me? Yeah. But I, I love, love doing that. that for it's those yeah. tiny little things that can shape someone's day. She might've gone and said, this man actually opened the door for me. I thought this this was dead, but here it is. Yeah, and then we were standing in line together, and she was actually talking, and we were just talking back and forth, and it opened her up. I think it was it was a surprise to her. I love good. random acts of kindness. That's why I throw this in there. Uh, yes. Something that people don't think often about Ryan <laughs> is how sound and vibration affects them. Can you talk to that? Yeah. So my first job out of college was designing and building recording studios, broadcast centers, and high-end nightclubs and churches. So I have kind of like a minor degree in acoustical engineering, a master acoustician, and learning how the sound waves affect the body, the psychoacoustic analysis of the the sound waves can produce alpha waves in the brain, or they can also suppress dopamine in the body. So for example, us playing our favorite song helps brings us out of our funk and makes us feel better. Likewise, a dog barking at four in the morning or a baby crying repetitively, if it's not ours, can be annoying to us. Or, you know, if we're living next, staying in a hotel that's next to a freeway and the car's driving by. So different sounds can have different effects on the body. Now there's frequencies that are also subharmonic frequencies and supersonic frequencies that are above the hearing range that can affect the body. And a, an example we find in home sometimes is if there's a really small leak in the HVAC system, or if maybe there's a motor like a fridge, when a fridge kicks on, it can create mm-hmm. subharmonic frequencies, which can go through the house. People can get anxiety because of that. It uh, trigger seizures in, in some cases. And these frequencies, uh, we find these frequencies and, and we help eliminate them. You know, some people like white noise. It helps them sleep. Yeah. For me personally, I like things quiet. I grew up out in the country, so I like things really quiet when mm. I sleep. But it, it really sends cues to the body to tell us where we are spatially and what's going on around us. What do you think about people that need to have a TV on when they sleep? <laughs> 
Oh man. Yeah. I've, no, I've run across those people. So, cause I always tell people let's take technology out of the bedroom. Let's only, the bedroom's only for sleeping six, sleeping and adult time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and let's keep it at that. And it's not for yeah. working. It's not for entertainment. It's not for TV. Let's take technology. But yeah, they say, well, I need that in there to sleep. And I guess if that's what they need, that's what they need. Everybody's a little bit different. Yeah. It's caused problems in relationships for me. Yes. <laughs> I cannot sleep. I don't like TV when I sleep at all. I love peace, quiet, and darkness. But, yeah, that's why I was just thinking. And imagine, you know, what's on TV is like a horror film, right? And you're sleeping. And what your body's hearing and what's going on is all of this negative stuff while you're trying to sleep. And I just don't think that your cells would appreciate that. I don't think that your body appreciates that. And I feel like it's causing more damage than good. I actually had an audiologist on the podcast recently, and we were actually talking about hearing and how important it is to just watch out for these little things that you could be doing in the home accidentally that could really be causing hearing loss, which you don't even know that you're causing. Yes, very true. Yeah. And I like to do a fun little game in the home where we listen and we find we listen for a sound, the loudest sound. And then we go turn that maybe it's a fan. So we turn the fan off and then we hear what's the next sound. Maybe it's a water running somewhere. So we turn that off and then we hear the next loudest sound what can, until we get all the way down to where we can't hear anything anymore. And we go and it's surprising how many things in the home when you're conscious and aware of it are actually making noise. That's such a great thing. When when I do meditation, sometimes I just sort of play that game with myself. I'm like, what can I hear? And what can I hear beyond that? And what can I hear beyond that? And it's mm -hmm. actually really amazing to see how far you can hear. Um, yep. So those of you listening, try that once we uh, <laughs> wrap up this podcast and see how much you can hear. Ryan, where is the first place that people can start to create a healthier toxic free environment for themselves you have mentioned so many good things thank you so much for your knowledge today i i said it before i love your brain i feel like i could talk to you for so many hours but where can people start because i feel like you're going to listen to this podcast and be like oh my gosh my home my environment what do i do where do i start you know we touched on one several times let your house breathe open up the doors and windows that probably has the biggest impact second thing take off your shoes that honestly is a is a pretty big deal think about all the places we go when we walk around outside we fill up our car with gas and we have oil on the ground and we go into the bathroom and there's e coli and there's cleaning supplies products on the ground and then we go walk through the park and there's just so and then we come into our house and we go walk through our house with our shoes on and kick our feet up on the couch. That's nasty. When I <laughs> test homes that they don't take off their shoes, it's some of the worst environment microbiology wise. So just that's such an important thing to do is leave your shoes at your house at, at the door. Now, another big one is keep your home clean. And I know this it seems like something so easy to say, but I go into some of these homes and and they're just not clean. And the things that are in the dust, the things that are behind the fridge that are underneath the couch, we got to vacuum the stuff. We got to clean it up because otherwise it's going to get into the air. We're going to breathe this stuff in and it's going to affect our body. So ventilation, take your shoes off, get the house clean, throw away the toxic chemicals that you have in your home. Try to eliminate the plastics that you have in your kitchen, anything that's touching your food, the microplastics. Turn off all of your electronics when you're not using them. In fact, you could even go a step further and turn off your circuits at night when you're sleeping. We do that at our house. We have it on an automatic switch where we hit mm -hmm. the button and it kills off the power to that portion of our house. And we sleep in a zero energy field. Kind of like when you were on your road trip and you were sleeping out in those areas, you get that same kind of feeling. It makes a big difference. So those are really like the top, top of my list to do. And they're all free. They're all easy. You can do them right now. Thank you for that. And Ryan, when we were sleeping in the van, you'd look at the sky and you could see every single star. Yeah. Magical. So magical. What did I want to say? You mentioned something. Why aren't you in Australia? First off, how do we, <laughs> <laughs> how can you help us? <laughs> so can you just quickly explain like, what do you do? So if someone comes to you for help, what do you actually do? What's the process? 
So if you're in our area uh, in the States, we do have different locations throughout in, in uh, Idaho, Utah, California, Arizona, but we have developed a virtual testing program kit where we yes. send you a bunch of meters and testing equipment and like a Swiffer to collect dust and a vial to collect water, uh, meters to go through and measure your house. And then it comes with, I just spent the last three months creating this training program. So it's 40 different videos on all these different topics. And I walk you through the house and show you exactly where to look, what to test for, what the mold looks like, how to use, how to read the chemical, everything. It's very, very in-depth. We put a lot of time into it. So with the, with the kit that you get in the mail and then the videos, <clears throat> you go through and do all the testing. And then you get on the call with me or one of the coaches that I have. And we talk about all the results and we go through and we figure out what we can do for your home to make it much more healthy. And I'm assuming we can probably ship to Australia. We haven't really looked into that yet, but I don't see any reason why we couldn't. Neither do I. That sounds so good. I'll definitely be putting a link to the website in our show notes, guys. But before we wrap up the show, Ryan, is there anything else that you would love to share? You did a really good job of bringing out the information. We touched on a lot of the important <laughs> stuff. You know, I, I just want to reiterate, if you're, if you're ever in doubt, use nature as your golden standard. That's, that's always my go-to. Whenever you're confused, you're not sure what to do, how, how was it ancestrally? What did we do 500 years ago? What... What was the lighting like? What was the food like? What was, you know, go back to nature. And if there was something in your life that's not natural, replace that with something that is natural. And you're, you're never going to go wrong by doing that. Totally. But, and, you know, also too, don't, don't stress out about this stuff either. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. I don't want everybody thinking, oh my gosh, my home is killing me. There's so many easy little things you can do and just yes. focus on what you can do and take little steps. Do a little, little bit here, a little bit tomorrow. When you're in the grocery store shopping, the next time pick healthier stuff. Use healthier choices. Download the EWG app and use that as your guide for your personal care products and your cleaning supplies. And Just take small steps at a time. You don't have to do it all at once. Totally. Guys, jump on his Instagram, test my home. I'll put the link in the show notes so that you can have like this little source of really inspiring videos and things, which is how I actually came across Ryan. He was on the story of someone else's story that I was watching. And I'm so lucky that I was like, wait, 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 let me go back. Who is this? What are they doing? And then I got our whole health guru to reach out and say, please come on the show. Thank you so much. I might even invite you back so we can delve even deeper into a few other things. Thank you so much for your time today, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, this has been mind blowing and my favorite podcast of the year so far. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Bye. Hope you found these two episodes super valuable, guys. If you have any questions, just jump on Instagram and please comment below on these posts uh, and then we'll reach out to you. I hope that these two episodes have inspired you to create a much better living environment at home. Remember these mystery illnesses and things that pop up. And if you're constantly getting sick and all of this sort of stuff, look at your home environment and just see, are there things that I could be doing to purify the air? Are there things that I could be doing to help myself to get into better health? like your water, like your sound, like the EMF waves, like the 5G, like the hard wiring, every little thing will help the toxic chemicals, your perfumes, your cleaning products, what you're putting in your hair, your uh, facial products. Be really selfish with your health. Okay, you are worth prioritizing your health. Okay, and just remember if you think it's expensive now, think about how expensive your bills will be, your health bills will be in the future. See you next week, team. Thank you, Times Infinity, for spending time with me. It really means a lot. Putting yourself first will really help escalate your goals your dreams and I love being on the journey with you so make sure you come and tell me on my Instagram at whole health which is h-o-l 
underscore health and comment below this podcast photo to share your thoughts on my show today. And if you enjoyed it, please leave me a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify so that I can keep bringing amazing value to you. I'm sending you truckloads of love, power, and joy. Bye for now.